back to my channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, watch those ads. I basically be in this video talking about how I really feel about something because I found out some good news, but also some bad news for me. So let's get into this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, watch those ads. Don't skip those ads or bump those ads. Let me start off by just saying welcome back to the channel, y'all. Um, a lot heavy on my heart. You know, I just posted my book or whatever. Real life never felt so real. And that book is based on a true story, which it is a true story. On what I've been through through my childhood trauma with my mother. Um, part two is about to drop because I'm about to get up on the keyboard and start writing out my second book. Because there's a lot that's heavy on me right now. So, I'm going to get to the good news in a minute. And I'm going to get to the bad news right now. Um, I spoke with someone on the phone today. I'm not going to say who it was. And I found out some information about my family. Being who I am, you know, my mom was never always there for me. My grandma was. So, I basically don't know what the definition of a real mother is because I never had one. That's why I wound up getting onto social media and laying onto social media for an outlet. Because of all the things I was going through, I felt like, you know, it was best for me to share my life and my story out there to the world because somebody else might be going through the same thing that I was going through at the time. Right now in their life as a child that they can't talk about until they actually get grown like I'm grown now. But let me make a long story short. My mom always treated me like an outcast, not like a child of her own. Until this day that I'm grown, she still treats me like I'm nobody, like I'm a piece of shit, like I'm not a part of her. I feel like deep down inside, if you created me, you carry me in the womb and push me out. You gave me life. How could you treat me like a piece of shit? You know what I'm saying? Like, how can you treat me like I'm not your child? It was always that one favorite child that everybody loved, which was my sister in our household. She got everything. They they gave her the world. You know what I'm saying? They treated me and my brother like outcasts. Like we wasn't a part of the family. You know what I'm saying? So they always had that favorite child. I feel like it should never be a favorite child in anybody's life when you got multiple. You know, like when you got a lot of kids. I never treat none of my kids like an outcast. You know what I'm saying? I never treat my kids the way my mama treat me. But you always got that one favorite child that they always linger to and they tell everything to and that they close to even though that's my mama firstborn you don't treat your other daughters like shit you don't treat your other daughters like they're not a part of you when you gave them life so today i found out that i'm about to be an auntie great news to the soul but bad news to the body and the mind because why my mom could have called me on the phone and said, Mika, you know, you about to be an auntie, such and such about to have a baby. You know, I think it'd be best for you to be a part of, you know, a part of, you know, being in our life at this point of our life. And we need to forgive each other um, on how we feeling. Basically, you know, she don't, you know, y'all know how I feel about her. The reason why I'm breaking down is because I've been going through this mental thing all day after hearing the news that I'm about to be an auntie. But at the same time, it's a joyful thing, but it's not a joyful thing. because my mama not going to give me the opportunity to be in my niece or nephew's life because she's not letting me be in their life now. I had to find out from someone else that I'm about to be an auntie. But not only that, she got my number where she can pick up the phone and call me and let me know. I thought that giving her my phone number would have changed a lot in our relationship to where she would have picked up the phone and called me and let me know, you know, how she doing or what's going on. I used to get phone calls from my mom, don't let me lie, and say, hey, how you doing, how the kids, whatever, I love you, and hang up. I don't get no phone calls anymore. I don't get a hello, how you doing, daughter, let's meet up for lunch, let's do something, you know, I love you. I don't get those phone calls. I feel like, I feel like it's just never fair for me to linger on to social media about my life, about what I'm going through, because... The outlet, it can be it can be fixed. You know what I'm saying? And what I mean by being fixed is me and her can work these differences out together if she really realized how much I really love her and forgive her for all the things she have done. I never will forget. But at the end of the day, I will never treat my girls the way my mama treat me. And the reason why I never knew what a real mother was, because I never had a real mother, I had a grandmother. And I feel like I I lean on to 
other people like women wise such as my mama that got my kids now as being a real mother because that's all i see is a real mother when somebody steps in and take your children because cps took your children out of your care she steps in and take care of my kids it's only real mother that i see and besides papa grandma because she was always there for me i don't know what a real mother is i never had a real mother you know what i'm saying i want that feeling of a real mother you know don't wait till i die and then try to come around and change things don't wait till you know i come up in the game or i, or I become famous or something actually happens and I make, you know, I'm out here making it. And then you want to come around and say, I'm sorry for all the things you have done. I forgive you, mama. This is a message to my mother. I forgive you for whatever you have done to me. I will never forget. Let's make this thing work. Don't treat me like an outcast. Stop treating me like an outcast. Stop treating me like I'm not a child of your own. Stop acting like you never carried me in your womb. Feel the kicks and the movements and the hiccups and all the cravings and everything that happens with pregnancy that you gave me life that you don't love me. Because the color of my skin. Stop judging me because the color of my skin. I'm just like you are. I'm no different than you. I'm just a, a different shade color. But I'm you. I'm every bit of you. You see me and you. I'm never going to be that child to not be there for my mother. I'm never going to be that child to let somebody disgrace you or drag your name out. I will never be that child to not be there for you. I forgive you. I done told you so many times. But y'all always got that favorite child in the family that y'all run to and tell everything to and make it seem like, oh, it's okay. Well, she knows. And, you know, it doesn't matter who else don't know. You got all these girls out here that you gave life to. One of my sisters dead and gone. She wanted closure just like I wanted closure. We talked about this behind closed doors. And she was like, why do mama treat us the way she treat us? Why she treat us like outcasts? I said, I don't understand. I don't know why. I know she made mistakes in her life. I know, you know, she came across a path to where, you know, she just felt like she wanted to give up on life. You know what I'm saying? But you still had your mother there to carry on your children, to take care of us and give us life for us to know who each other are as siblings. You know what I'm saying? So why we can't continue that, continue that love that my grandma had in the family before she died? The family got separated because they just didn't want to agree and disagree on certain things in our family that they wanted us to do. But this message is to my mom. Mom, I just want to let you know that I know you're watching my Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. I know that you know how I feel deep down inside about the situation with you treating me like an outcast, calling me names, and not treating me like a child of your own. I forgive you. I done said it 101 times in my life, on my videos. Please just come forward and just let us get together and, and get all this anger that we have built deep down inside towards each other out. You know what I'm saying? If this is going to be a resource for you to get in contact with me, then this video need to reach you directly. Now, let me say this right here. The joyful of being an auntie, the first time that my sister gave birth to my nephew, Zaquan, was a, was a wonderful experience. I was young, yes. My sister was 15 at the time she gave birth. And that was the most beautiful thing in the world to actually hold the baby for the first time when she gave birth to Zaquan. So I was an auntie, you know, uh, when I was young, you know what I'm saying? That's how I fall in love with children because my sister had a baby so young. But they always treated me like an outcast during that time too because my sister she would be tired and want to go to bed and I would I would get the baby like you know I got him let me let me hold him let me take care of him while you sleep you know what I'm saying so I've been an auntie for a while now Nene Zaquan um Vea and CJ those are my those are my nieces and nephew and I love them to death I, I love them to death in regards to the situation what anybody may say or, or do I love my nieces and nephews and me feeling the joy of about to be an auntie, I want to be a part of that baby's life because I want that baby to know, like, you know, you got an auntie right here. Anytime you need anything, you need anybody to talk to, auntie is always going to be there. So, mom, if this video reaching you, let me be a part of these. Let me be a part of my niece and nephew life. Let me be a part of y'all life. Let me, let me into the family. Let me in on things. Call me on the phone. Let me know, you know, how you feeling or, or what you going through. I'm always going to be right here to hold you down. I'm always going to have your back regardless of the situation I'm going through now with my own life. I want to be a part of your life and a part of my sister's life. And the way you got things going is where you got, the, you got your, you got my sisters hating me. You got them not knowing who I am. You got them not reaching out to me. You know what I'm saying? I don't see why you just treating me like this. It, it hurts inside and out. It, it, it's hard to even explain how I feel. That's why I got these glasses on because I, I got so much anger built down deep inside of my heart to where I just want to scream because love never felt so real in life 
of being in love with a man, being in love with myself, being in love with my children, because I don't know what real love is. I never had it from a mother. I never had it from a father. I had it from a grandmother. So how can I know what love is? But I know some way in my heart, deep down inside, that love comes from my babies. And that's the reason why God gave me 10 beautiful children to love them. I don't treat my kids no different like everybody trying to say on the internet about Samaria. It's it's because I treat Samaria a certain way because I'm trying to give her that hardcore love. And I'm trying to give her that easy love. I can't be your friend and your mama too at the same time. And being a mother, it's a hard job. It's not easy. You know what I'm saying? But I'm raising 10 and I'm doing this. And I feel like you just seeing that. My life is different than yours, but I'm a part of you. I'm every bit of you. I look just like you and you can't stand me because of the fact that they ain't going. You see that I'm holding this shit down with 10 children and out here doing what I got to do to protect my children. But you shouldn't hate me because of that, because it's, you know what? It's a, it's a difference between me and you. Yeah, you created me. You had me. I look just like you. I maybe got kids like you and everything else. But it's always a different piece that's missing to the puzzle that you don't see. The person that you're looking right, that the person that you're looking at is a person that you created, a person that you gave life to. That one day you never know where God's going to take us to the next level. You never know. You can't always have that favorite child in your life that you always linger to. You got to linger to each and every one of your children to let them know how much you love them and support them through they through anything they are going through. The situation with CPS should have been you should have had the kids, not mama. That I called mama. You should have been there from day one when these babies were born. You should have been there to hold my hand and feet when I'm going through what I'm going through. Where were you through everything I've been through? When I gave life to my firstborn, where were you? You know, I want to be there every step of the way with all my children when they're going through what they're going through. I don't want to go through a situation like I'm going through with you. And I tend to linger to social media to use as an outlet to get everything that I got going on deep down inside out. Because you know why? I love my mama. And nobody can't change how I feel about my mother. Even though she hurted me and scarred me for the rest of my life, physically, mentally, and emotionally, I'm messed up about that. Because you know why? I was judged by the color of my own skin. I was judged by a thing on my father because my father was dark skinned. She just treated me like that because of my father. That doesn't give you a reason not to say, Mika, I love you. I'm sorry. Let's move forward. Let's work this thing out. Let's go to counseling and therapy, whatever we got to do together as a team to get our love back for each other. That I shouldn't have to link on to another person to call them mama because I have a real mother that's living here in flesh on this earth that I can hold and hug and love because she's not dead. She's still here. I shouldn't have to linger to another mother that and I call her mama because I don't feel the love from my own mother. And that's bad to say because, you know what, I love my mama to death. And I just feel like you should never treat me like an outcast. You should never treat me like I'm nobody. And it's just like the world just don't feel right because ever since I was growing up, it was always that favorite child was my sister. The, even my auntie, my grandmother, all of them, all my aunties really loved it, my oldest sister. And I feel like, damn, I'm right here. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. I'm right here. Stop treating me like an outcast. Stop treating me like I'm nobody. I'm your daughter. You gave me life. God created me to be still here on this earth for a reason. And if a lot of you going through what I'm going through, don't be afraid to open up about your situation. Don't be afraid to even write it down. Because I've been writing for so long and I feel like I finally got it out there in the book for the world to see you know, what I've been through in my childhood life, but still into my adult life, I'm still going through the same situation. Another phase in my life right now that I'm about to be an auntie and I'm glad I'm about to be an auntie, but I can't even be in the baby life. Why? You know what I'm saying? Why? I didn't do anything wrong to you or my siblings. You manipulating these girls, putting things in their head and telling them things and probably got them all messed up. They didn't want me even around the baby. I didn't do anything wrong. I feel like it's not right. It's not fair to me. Or my children because they don't even know who their grandma is. They don't They don't know who their grandma is. I tell them all the time, you still tell your grandma, hey, you still tell her you love or whatever. I might be saying things around y'all or recording videos or doing things. Never never stop the love that y'all have in y'all heart for your grandmother. Even though she treat me wrong, that's between me and her. I still want y'all to know who your grandma is. And I feel like I'm not wrong telling them to love her. I feel like I'm right because, you know, but just because what me and her going through doesn't mean I want them to have a bad relationship with their grandma. You know, and even though she's not around... You know, helping me or nothing with them. I still want them to know, still love your grandma regardless of the situation. But it's a part two of my book coming out. 
And I'm about to start writing on that now because there's a lot that's going on deep down inside that hurt me. And the good news was that I'm about to be an aunt new and uh, auntie and the bad news is that I'm not going to be able to be in the baby life because my mama not allowing me to be in the family at all. She's still treating me like, like I said, an outcast. She's not treating me like a child of her own. And all these years and I'm past, I'm 38 years old and still going through all the, the scars in my life of being neglected, physically, mentally, emotionally scarred for the rest of my life because of my own mother. I don't know what generation they came from and what curse they had back in those days, but I feel like the things that she did went through with her mother and seeing her mother do things such as, you know, treat my auntie a certain way. And my auntie told me the story that my mama took that in because what she's seen. But, you know, at the end of the day, you still can make a change. It's not like you can't make a change and, and be a better person and be a better person than your own mother. The way, you know, my grandma treated me a little bit different, too, as well. So you could be a little bit different than that. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to hold on to your childhood trauma that you went through. Open up about it. You know, be strong about the situation. And, you know, thank the Lord that you've been blessed with 14 beautiful children and that you got all your children still living self for one. You know, rest in peace, Crystal. But you still got us here. You're looking at us. You know what I'm saying? I forgive you, Mama. No, no matter the situation, if you're going to watch this video, I forgive you. Part two of my book is about to be out. And I want y'all to go purchase that book. Deep down inside, I'm torn. I'm tore down. I just don't understand. What did I do wrong? I just feel like my life should never been. I should never still be here to this day. I should have been gone a long time ago. Huh? If that's how you really feeling. You should have never had me. And I'm sorry that you don't see the real me, your daughter, the one that you gave life to. It's sad.